The astronomers have struck gold. The opening of a new chapter in astronomy is their dream come true. We have now located the closest Earth-like twin, or doppelganger, in space, which is the holy grail of astronomy. We have found life on Proxima b, and it is completely different from what we had previously thought. Something astonishing has been observed by the James Webb Telescope, indications of survival in a realm of unending darkness and searing heat. Just 25 light years away, on the planet Proxima b, half of the planet remains perpetually frozen and the other half is scorching hot. Since what we have discovered is just the beginning, let's see what wonders this twilight world has to offer. Proxima b, which is barely 30% larger than Earth, is a region of intense heat and never-ending darkness. Proxima Centauri, its host star, looks nothing like the fiery ball of fire we view on a daily basis. A year is only 11 days long, therefore it's a blink of an eye. The distance between it and its star is only 7 million kilometers, so if you were standing on the rocky surface of Proxima b, you could virtually give Proxima Centauri a high five. The distance between Earth and our Sun is not even 5% of that. The Outcome Proxima b experiences harsh circumstances. But beyond its hard exterior is a secret that has the power to alter our understanding of far-off worlds. With one side of the planet always facing its star and absorbing unrelenting heat, and the other side trapped in eternal night and colder than an arctic winter, this location is what astronomers refer to as tidally locked. Living on a stove is similar in that one side is boiling while the other is freezing. It raises the question of whether anything could endure in such a harsh setting. The rest of the globe, even if there might be liquid water lurking in that tempered zone between day and night? Don't think about it. Extreme temperatures aren't the only problem, the planet also needs to cope with some very crazy activity from its star. Massive flares capable of frying anything in their path are a common feature of Proxima Centauri's outbursts. Consider solar flares that are 100 times more powerful than those produced by our own Sunday. I wish you luck if you're a tiny microorganism attempting to survive. Surviving would be extremely difficult due to the radiation alone. People on the Earth continue to dream in spite of everything. Why? Because it's engaging, close, and unlike anything we've ever experienced. It provides a glimpse of what could be, the possibility that life has somehow managed to adjust to these harsh extremes. It would be among the hardest, most robust materials in the world if life were found there. It forces us to consider what is truly necessary for life to exist and what is only a luxury. Finding life is only one goal of planet exploration, another is to comprehend the astronomical diversity of planets in our cosmos. Not every world is given a comfortable, Earth-like environment. The James Webb Space Telescope is providing us with unprecedented views of some locations that defy the basic criteria of a livable planet. This world is now a detailed one with landscapes and possibilities we're still attempting to comprehend, rather than merely a dot on a star chart. The concept of reaching that point is still firmly rooted in science fiction. It would take us thousands of years to reach this world at our current rate and with the technologies we now possess. However, some ambitious plans are being discussed, such as Breakthrough Starshot, which intends to launch small laser-powered probes to Proxima Centauri within a few decades. Consider launching a tiny probe at a fifth of the speed of light across the stars. Data could be returned throughout our lifetimes if it succeeds, giving us a first look at a completely new world that lies just outside of our solar system. The goal of interplanetary travel is about humans, not just science. It's about the questions that have motivated us ever since we first questioned if we were alone when we gazed up at the stars. This universe may not be the ideal replica of Earth. Indeed, it may be quite terrible. However, it is a mystery, a challenge, and a new frontier. And humanity will continue to look for answers as long as there are mysteries. The finding of the planet has raised questions as well as hopes. How could you possibly survive there? How might people adjust to such harsh conditions? Imagine arriving on the planet, where one side is frozen solid while the other is constantly burned by Proxima Centauri's heat. The Terminator line, 
the thin line that separates these two extremes, may be the sole area where things are reasonably controllable. We might discover any indications of life in this area, which is essentially a twilight zone. Between dazzling sunlight and complete darkness, the Terminator line would be a realm of perpetual dusk. The idea that living things may adapt to such a little area of habitable space is intriguing. If there is life there, the secret to surviving would probably be adaptation beyond our wildest expectations. In order to survive, microbes may adhere to the Terminator line and exploit both the heat and the cold. Life may evolve a defense mechanism against the powerful solar flares or burrow far underground to avoid the worst of the radiation. Naturally, these are only conjectures, but they demonstrate the remarkable adaptability that life may require in order to persist. This planet is an essential component of the cosmic puzzle, even if we never discover life there. It aids in our comprehension of the boundaries of habitability. Why is a planet habitable? Is there more to it than the mere existence of water? This universe pushes us to think more broadly about what constitutes a habitable world. It makes us consider how life may flourish in drastically different environments than our own, even in the face of overwhelming odds. Even if Proxima B is extreme, life is still possible. Let's examine why we are interested in this far-off place. The habitable zone of Proxima Centauri, which is somewhat closer to its star than Earth's is to the Sun, offers some hope for extraterrestrial life. This indicates that the planet is at a position where liquid water may conceivably exist despite being so near to its star. A delicate balance must be struck between getting close enough to provide the warmth required for liquid water and staying away from scorching the entire planet. It's fascinating in part because of this equilibrium. The planet appears to be on the verge of being habitable, which makes it an intriguing subject for research. We may also be able to learn more about the surface conditions from the data gathered by the James Webb Space Telescope. Is there water in liquid form? Does the existence of complicated chemistry suggest the existence of life? Scientists are keen to find answers to questions like these. This universe is still worth examining even if the answers are negative. Every bit of knowledge we get about this planet advances our knowledge of how planets develop and change over time, as well as what conditions are necessary for life to exist. The possibility of life extends beyond microorganisms clinging on a thin twilight band. It also has to do with how resilient life is. Extreme settings are something that life as we know it can adapt to. On Earth, we have discovered living things in the icy depths of Antarctica, boiling hot springs, and even the radioactive remnants of Chernobyl. Who's to say life couldn't find a way to exist on this far-off planet if it can adapt to such extremes? People continue to dream despite the enormous obstacles, which range from the great distance to the harsh conditions on the planet itself. The feasibility of interstellar travel is being investigated by projects such as Breakthrough Starshot. The goal is to reach Proxima Centauri in a few decades by using strong lasers to accelerate small probes to a sizable fraction of the speed of light. We would be able to see an exoplanet in a different star system up close for the first time thanks to these probes' ability to snap images, collect data, and transmit it back to Earth. It would be a huge accomplishment if Breakthrough Starshot or a project like it were to succeed. We would be able to investigate a different star system for the first time using real spacecraft in addition to telescopes. Our knowledge of the universe and our role in it may be altered by the information we are able to collect. The very act of searching for life on another planet is a tribute to our intellect and curiosity. Even though we have a long way to go before reaching this far-off world, the actions we are taking now are setting the stage for further investigation. We have a better understanding of the world thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, and initiatives like Breakthrough Starshot are expanding our understanding of what is feasible. The current era of space exploration is fascinating, and this planet is leading the way. This planet represents our ambition to discover, comprehend, and push the boundaries of our knowledge and is more than just a far-off location. It serves as a reminder that the cosmos is far larger, stranger, and more amazing than we can fathom, and that there is still a great deal to learn. 
The Terminator Zone is a slender strip that lies between these two extremes, where light and dark meet in a never-ending twilight. Everyone is talking about that location, where the temperature may not be too high or too low and the circumstances may be ideal for life. It's intriguing, if not a little odd, to think that life might be lingering in this small twilight band. This is a tiny strip, a literal line, where temperatures may be sufficiently moderate for liquid water to exist, it is not some lush rainforest or infinite ocean. With the scorching sun on one side and the icy cold on the other, picture life crammed into this borderland. Just the idea is thrilling and a little scary. But let's examine what this Earth is actually facing before we get too caught up in fantasies about tiny green aliens living happily ever after. First of all, Proxima Centauri, its star, is not a benign giant. Being a red dwarf, it is smaller and far colder than our sun. It's not, however, peaceful. This star is notorious for its fierce temper, ejecting strong radiation outbursts that make it anything but hospitable. A planet's atmosphere may be readily removed by these star outbursts, or their surface could be inundated with radiation that would render life on the planet all but impossible. Therefore, any possible life surviving in the twilight zone would have to be extremely hardy. We're talking fortitude on par with surviving a nuclear accident. Could life exist in this small strip of balance, even though the Proxima B twilight zone might be the key to survival? The Terminator Zone in Proxima B is a mystery. Strange animals flourish in the deep ocean, where sunshine never reaches, and microbes can survive in radioactive zones. Perhaps, just perhaps, such extremophiles, organisms that scoff at harsh circumstances, may exist on this far-off globe. Who knows? If life exists at all, it might be very different from what we know, adjusting to a strange chemical that doesn't follow our known laws. Scientists are aiming their hopes and telescopes at this strange world to see if it may truly support life. If this planet has an atmosphere at all, some of the light passes through it when it passes in front of its star. Now is the time to look for hints concerning the compounds that are there. Is there water vapor, methane, or oxygen present? These are the kinds of things that could indicate life, or at the very least, motivate us to look further. However, once more, finding these components would only be an intriguing indication and not a certainty that anything is living out there. Plans are being considered that are much more grandiose than telescopes. In a few decades, if all goes according to plan, we could be able to see this world up close. It's incredible to consider the possibility of really viewing pictures of that twilight strip and determining whether anything is surviving there between the extremes. Finding out if we are alone in the cosmos is only one aspect of the problem, but it is by no means the only one. It is also forcing us to reconsider what it means to be a habitable planet. For a long time, scientists believed that life required Earth-like conditions, such as a benign atmosphere, plenty of liquid water, and a constant temperature. All of that is being challenged in our world. This is not a cozy version of Earth 2.0. With a star that is poised to strike at any time, the planet is half frozen and half blazing. We must expand our conception of what is feasible if life can exist there, even in a narrow sliver of twilight. Perhaps planets that we have previously dismissed as being excessively cruel merit reconsideration. It will take a lot more observation to even have a sense of whether this planet may host life, and the James Webb Space Telescope is just getting started. Furthermore, finding evidence of a potentially habitable environment is not proof in and of itself, for us to be certain that there might be life there, we would need to find something really specific, such as recognizable signs of biological activity. Although there is still a long way to go, each new finding brings us one step closer. The history of this far-off planet is as much about us as it is about the planet. It's a tale of curiosity, testing limits, and not settling for simple solutions. The tenacity of life itself, and our own will to comprehend the cosmos, is demonstrated by the fact that we are even contemplating the potential of life on a world this extreme. Perhaps there are a lot of resilient microorganisms in that twilight zone in our Earth. Or perhaps it's a barren world made entirely of ice and rock. 
In any case, the process of discovering the answer is teaching us something about the possibilities of the universe and our own ability to venture into the unknown. This world serves as a reminder of how much we still don't know as we continue to look through our telescopes, send out probes, and dream of the stars, contradictions abound on this planet, bright and dark, blazing and freezing. However, there is a riddle that is worth solving hidden among those paradoxes. The search itself is deepening our comprehension of what it means to be a part of this huge, bizarre universe, whether or not we discover life and perhaps just possibly one day we'll be able to tell if something is out there, clinging to that tiny edge of twilight, demonstrating once more how weird and adaptive life in all its forms can be.